Okay, so in this segment, I'm going to uh, demonstrate how I make coffee cup, coffee mugs, the way a production potter would do it. Um, I'm not going to break it down into steps like we did with the bowl demo. I'm just going to throw and tell uh, what the differences are. For starters, when I'm opening, like you see here, a bowl, I would make this bottom curved, because I want the bowl to be curved at the bottom. With a coffee mug, it, I want it to be a cylinder. So I'm going to make the bottom flat from the start. So I'm going to spread this out with my th thumb, using my thumb like a rib, four inches in diameter. And then I'm going to throw a straight-sided cylinder. Uh, I like my coffee mugs to be straight-sided. They're just more, it's just more functional that way. And so the actual dimensions are four inches high and four inches wide. Now I'm gonna pause here um, to show um, how important it is to measure according to the shrinkage. When clay is dried and fired, it shrinks as much as 12%, this clay at least. So I would need to measure, if I want my proportions to be the same for each cup, I'd need to use this measuring device. Now, I'm seeing that it's a little bit taller than it is wide, so I can, I can spread this out a little bit to get the proportions the same. Like that. Now I also put a little recess right here at the top by the lip because I want, um, I'm going to do a kind of carving later in the next segment. So the important thing to know about clay is that when it's, it shrinks as much as 12% when it's dried and fired. So what I've got here are examples of the finished high fire coffee mug that you can use in your kitchen. The intermediate uh, stage, bisque firing, this is the stage before you glaze it. And then I just threw this, so this would be the greenware example. So one of the ways to get where you want to go, get, end up with a cup the size you want, is by using this shrink ruler. You start by measuring the desired end result, which is four, a four, inch, four by four inch cup. Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to measure it in relation to this shrinkage uh, ruler. And you'll see that four inches, it's more like four and a half inches on here. So I'm going to use my caliper to measure the 12% size. Now, here, I'll bring this over. Notice, now, that's the correct size for the greenware. That means that when this dries out and gets fired to bisque, it'll be this much smaller. And then when it is glazed and fired to cone tin, it'll be this much smaller. So this, this is how the, the shrink ruler can help you determine how, how, to, how to arrive at this measure. What I want to uh, show and tell about while I'm making these cups is uh, the principle of motion science. Um, that was developed in the, at the dawn of the um, Industrial Revolution. Basically, it's about keeping um, your actions as simple and direct as possible um, so that it takes the fewest amount of actual 
moves to make a cup. So uh, consider this. If I sell one of these cups for $15, it'll be in a retail price of $30. Well, I'm only going to get paid half of the $30. So I'm going to want to be making, I don't want to spend any more than 15 minutes max on any one cup. Now that includes throwing it, trimming it, glazing it, firing it, packing it up, and taking it to a shop. All of those steps, not just, not just one step. If, there's any more, if it takes any longer than 15 minutes per cup, I'm, I should just go and flip hamburgers somewhere. So um, that measuring thing that I was showing you, um, a production potter doesn't actually do that. Once they've learned, once they've taught themselves what size, how wide, and how tall, they don't, they don't need to use that measure anymore. You, train, you eventually can train your eye to know when it's the right size just by looking at it. But that takes a lot of practice. Now, it's important to have your tools handy and not lose them, because that can slow you way down. Now, there'll be two other steps um, in the process of making these cups. Um, notice that I use a bat to so that I'm not having to handle the cup to remove it from the wheel. The two other steps that you're going to see in two other segments is um, I'm going to carve a texture. After I've trimmed these um, cups in the next segment, I'm going to carve a texture with, a car with this carving tool. And then I'm going to extrude some handles uh, so that these cups have handles. So a production potter, knowing that he's got those other steps, um, it's not uncommon for a production potter to make two or three dozen cups in one day, trim those cups the next day, and apply the handles um, on the second day. So. Today's throwing day. Tomorrow will be trimming and handle day. And in this way, it's, it kind of cre it, creates, it creates an assembly line of sorts uh, that makes my actions um, much more efficient. Functional artwork uh, has some constraints. So it's often a challenge to um, create a style or voice. So one of the challenges of the production potter is to do something with the design or the glaze that's uniquely theirs. So mine is this fluted side, this fluted texture that I put on it. And there's a certain combination, certain combination of glazes that people who buy my work like and, and is popular. So that sort of um, style is something that you develop over time. By the way, this, the cups um, in um, the introduction to ceramics, we make bowls. In the second semester, 16, art 16B you, you, is when you will be assigned the coffee cups.
So this is actually a second semester uh, project. Okay, so now these will go into the damp room and then tomorrow we'll bring these back out and do the next segment.